So we have been um, very happy with uh, the studies at FAU. And right now, I think we, we are doing well in our lives. If you want to live in Germany, you should definitely know German. So I think uh, I'm lucky because I came with a lot of other Indians. And Indians do have this uh, special privilege of coming with a lot of other people from their own country. You have a community, I would say. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, PA, uh, DMIP and IMIP, uh, at least according to me, are sort of the most important uh, courses um, for this field. Because that's programming and I also have mathematics. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, it's the same applies for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think to get good grades, you have to uh, really be very uh, thorough with your basics. The environment around you, there are a lot of uh, amazing researchers in FAU. Sometimes you have to study the, the professor and the PhD students as much as yeah. you study the, the, the lecture itself. So you will have to do some research project and also your thesis. Try to choose, of course, a topic that you like, otherwise it will be difficult for you. Mm -hmm. um, and focus on what you're doing and finish. Uh, don't leave things open because it's your life and it's your time. Uh, yeah. The faster you finish, the faster you start a job. Friends or someone or seniors could always support you uh, much better than starting alone. This is why we are yeah. here, actually. We are trying to help Oof. others. Uh, hi, Shia. Nice hi. to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Maybe like we can uh, talk a little bit about uh, our experience uh, with FAU and uh, what were our expectations and what did we see in reality at FAU. So yeah, maybe let's get started with some nice questions. Maybe I just uh, say my name. So uh, my name is Anamanshaya and I'm from Syria. Um, I'm Nidhi and I come from India. I started my master's at FAU in 2016 and that's when both of us met for the first time, Sham and me. So we have been um, very happy with uh, the studies at FAU. And right now, I think we, we are doing well in our lives. Uh, I'm doing PhD and Sham is um, working as um, data scientist. So I think if I, you prepared us well. <laughs> yeah, but, true. Uh, maybe I start over going back. So how did you start actually with FAU? How did you think about choosing this university and choosing the medical engineering um, branch? Uh, so when I was in uh, India, I had uh, just finished my bachelor's and um, for one year I was not sure what I want to do. But then during this uh, time, I was watching some data science uh, videos uh, specifically related to machine learning and deep learning from Stanford mm -hmm. University. And that um, made me uh, get some interest in the direction of this field. And then I um, started applying to university in Germany. So I chose Germany because um, I, I knew a couple of my friends who had come here and they were very happy with the education system and they, they were like uh, really um, happy with the, um, you know, the, the kind of motivation that they got from the universities and education in Germany. So uh, I just heard from them and then I thought it's, um, I think Germany will be a very good place for me to pursue my further studies. And um, because my interest was specific, I applied to uh, FAU of course, because uh, FAU offered a course, this medical imaging and data processing, which focused on uh, uh, courses like machine learning, deep learning and image processing. Mm -hmm. So that's how I happened to apply to FAU. I did apply to other universities too, but then I was in my head, I was um, clear that if I get FAU, admit at FAU, then I would not go for any other courses. And that's how I landed here. Yeah. So that's, Actually, <laughs> my story is a little bit different because it's a special one. I came to Germany as a refugee, so I didn't have much of choice uh, where to go or the freedom to go somewhere uh, else. Uh, however, I would say I was so lucky because I was in the neighborhood. It's very well known that FAU is one of the best in this field. So I also studied medical engineering in my bachelor. So as usual, when you start something, it's, this is how it works in, in my country, at least, or in my culture, that you start with something, you continue with the same uh, field. So I started medical engineering. I wanted to continue medical engineering. Uh, I don't regret this. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, of course. And how, how do you think your German is right now? Oh, it's we're, we're getting very well. I I'm continuing right now, uh, learning. I listening, listening to the lessons. I reached C one, 
Uh, wow, but okay. of course, when it comes to doing an exam or something, I still don't know. I haven't tried yet. But with work, it's kind of difficult to uh, to balance this stuff. Yeah, this that's is why pretty I good. I advise everyone before coming focus on the Zoom and then. <laughs> yes, I I totally agree with you. If you want to live in Germany, you should definitely know German. I'm working okay. on it, but. Um, not there yet. Like everyday life becomes much easier if you know German, yes. and you feel more um, uh, absorbed into the culture. Yes, yes, you yeah. feel more integrated if you know the, yeah. the language. What were the challenges that you faced when you joined FAU? Then was it easy going? Um, your friends supported you, or it was somehow surprising for you as well? So I think um, I'm lucky because I came with a lot of other Indians, and Indians do have this uh, special privilege of coming with a lot of other people from their own countries. We have a community, I would say. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I I never felt uh, like I'm away from home or um, homesick um, because I had a lot of great friends. They always supported. And there were a lot of uh, seniors who also supported me with uh, understanding the education system better in Germany. And uh, they guided me like roughly what courses would be nice to take, nice to start with in the first semester. And uh, yeah, they, they gave me a brief introduction to the courses. So that was very helpful. Um, so I, I don't think I faced much challenges, but I'm not sure how um, how you would answer this question was it, oh, it difficult was, it was different different uh I, I for to me i don't judge things from the first time I, I i give it some time of course the first semester is always difficult no matter what even if you have support uh, until you are just in co-op um but it, for me everything was surprising the flexibility of the program the way you are given so much freedom to choose what to do and then you're lost because you don't know much uh, but then we met actually one girl there was one girl from syria um, but until until we met her it was already a while until we figured out things how how, how things go um, but i would say always friends of someone or seniors could always support you uh, much better than starting alone this is why we are yeah. here actually we are trying to help you as well uh, correct yes yeah it was That's challenging true. like you said uh, feeling homesick the new system the new life the new place you have to cope to everything at once so true it's a huge cultural change yes for sure yeah but then once you uh, start understanding it better i think you'll start liking it more Oh, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, everything is so organized and um, you, you are never in that state of chaos. So you know yeah. that, okay, if you do this, you're safe. If you don't do this, maybe you face some implications. Yeah. yeah. But especially the you, I think at the start, it's good. Maybe it's a good strategy to um, really read the curriculum uh, carefully, know what is available. What mm -hmm. courses feels like something yes. interesting for you? There's always a description about a course. What could be a, a pre prerequisite or something exactly. like that um, to have an idea? I would always recommend starting at winter semester. However, you can always start at any semester, but it feels a little bit uh, weird when you start in summer semester. I started in winter, and you? Me too. We started yeah. together. Yeah, I think uh, I think we were in the same generation. Yeah, so to yeah. Say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it would be my recommendation to to start in uh, winter semester. But however, if you start in summer semester, uh, it's it's awesome. not bad. Yeah, that's not so bad. But then know that uh, you choose the right courses, and you just don't uh, keep piling up your courses, um, thinking that I have come in se uh, summer semester and most of the important courses have been already done in winter semester. So you can still go ahead and take some courses which are offered in summer semester that are. Um, uh, sort of backbone of this uh, course. So mm -hmm. I think 
we we should mention that uh, PR, PA, uh, DMIP, and IMIP, uh, at least according to me, are sort of the most important uh, courses um, for this field for this um, yes, program. Definitely. Yeah. But like Nidhi said, um, it's um, also not a problem if you start in summer semester and and also focus on the uh, courses which are important because you don't want to push this to the end and then uh, get surprised that you are learning now the, uh, the essentials. Um, start with those courses which are really um, the core ones and, and go forward with the extras. Maybe back to my point. So yeah, have a look at what you want to do. Um, try a few courses. Actually, you can drop any time. It's not like a, a traditional assistant. You attend um, anything you like and you have the option to stick to it and register for the exam or deregister even uh, three working days before the exam. Um, it's really, it's really a huge freedom that you are given here. Yeah, one, one point that you mentioned is really important and I really like that point that you should always know what you are interested in and take the courses accordingly. Uh, there will be a lot of people, a lot of seniors who can guide you uh, what, what you will be uh, learning from one particular course, but then um, don't allow anyone to, uh, you know, uh, force on you and say that, okay, this you have to take in this semester, or this is never taken in other semesters, or this is a course that has to be taken. So yeah. definitely the uh, compulsory ones are compulsory, but the elective ones, you you should know your own interests and what you want to do with those courses in future. So accordingly, you should uh, take the courses. Yeah. And uh, did you uh, also have conditional courses, Sham? Yes. I had the C++ programming and I also had mathematics. Okay. Yeah, right? this is the same applies for me. Yeah. yeah. I think this was yeah. terrifying at the start. Um, yes. You don't know at the beginning, should I focus on this or should I start already with the courses? What I did yeah. actually is that I, I took everything I could. Um, me too. What are the conditions <laughs> courses? because I thought I don't want to lose a lot of time just focusing on the conditionals. At the same time, you have to focus on the conditionals because if you mm -hmm. don't uh, pass, you are out already or you have to change yeah. one of the program. Exactly, yeah. So uh, we, we are the examples for taking so many courses and having cleared them in the first semester. So if we can do it, I think uh, the upcoming students yes, everyone can do it for sure. Yes. So don't just focus on uh, like three or four courses in your first semester, which your seniors will definitely advise you to focus on. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, have the guts, be brave and take the courses. And then even if you fail, you have more attempts. Um, if you don't and you don't get great grades, it's fine if you feel that you have gathered enough knowledge from the course. Yes, and actually it's not a shame to fail something, which was also one of the cultural differences here I, I have uh, seen. Actually, even if you fail a course, it doesn't show up in your transcript because you have the option to choose uh, what courses you want to show in your, uh, or what, what kind of, uh, do you want to share to share everything in your transcripts or do you want us only to share the succeeded one? Um, exactly. And it's really not a shame to fail something because you're learning. It's sometimes yeah. challenging the first the first time until you get to know the questions, the way uh, mm -hmm. things work. You might fail sometimes in a course, uh, yeah. but it's not it's not a problem. You always have yeah. a chance to repeat and you always have a chance to figure yourself out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think to get good grades, you have to uh, really be very uh, thorough with your basics. So it might not always happen that whatever is done in the lecture will be uh, asked in exam. It can be oral okay. or written. But uh, if your uh, basics are strong enough, then I think you will be in a position to tackle the questions. But if you just try to memorize and uh, go to the exam, very less chances of 
you will get a good yeah. grade. In Germany here, even if you go to the lecture, it doesn't mean that you are getting all the information. Uh, you are getting the the basics in the lecture room. You have to still go home and do your homework. You have to uh, sometimes uh, read research paper, sometimes watch videos. Uh, you have to return to the basics. Um, sometimes the lecturer would say something. And really, when you don't know what that is, write it down on, a, on your notes and go home, go back home and, and read about it. And listen, because this will help you a lot when you are challenged in, in an oral exam or even in a written exam. Um, yes. Don't expect what you have in the course will come in the exam exactly the way it is. Um, True. It's unfortunately not the case. Uh, of and course, some lectures are. <laughs> yeah, and also remember that, that you are uh, shifting from a bachelor course to a, a master course, and master course, master degree course always tries to uh, uh, focus on uh, focus on uh, giving you inputs for a, a career in research later on. So, yes. I mean, at least to some extent, uh, because uh, our, our course medical imaging and data processing. It's uh, basically designed for research, right? Of course, you can go for uh, other kinds of, uh, you know, applications, but then, um, it, uh, I mean, in the basic sense, it it is designed to um, make students aware right. about research and prepared, yeah. get prepared for research. Uh, so yes, I think it's, it's important to keep your mind running and, uh, that manner so that you know mm -hmm. what research is and uh, because those are the qu kind of questions you might face in the exam too. What was also surprising a little bit for me was uh, the grading system. It was reversed. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. I studied also in, in Lebanon. So in Syria, it was like uh, 100%. And um, it's so easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Lebanon, it was like the, the American GPA uh, from one to four. Um, uh, it's also here from one to four, but it, it's the other way around. So yeah. um, one is the, best. the full grade, <laughs> the best. Four is like uh, almost failing. Five is <laughs> definitely failing. Uh, a good range. What do you think is a good range? Um, I felt a good range for me when I was studying, I was aiming always to have, of course, one. 0.0 yeah. <laughs> but i would say i would be still happy if i'm getting something between 1.7 and 2.3 yeah but it's um out, out below 2.3 i would like how to say more and yeah more towards the four I, I would be sad and i would try actually to either take another course to um to compensate my loss or i would yeah try to repeat it somehow. I sometimes fail myself in some exams, but please don't do that. <laughs> Just finish. Actually, maybe this is a good point also to mention yeah. that uh, we discovered after finishing that the grades are not so important. What about you? True, true. I, I totally agree with you. My grades were not that great. And I, I was like, not just in the masters, but also during bachelors. I, I have been a very consistent student. So here also I was consistent with 2.3 grade. Uh, so it, it was okay. Of course, I got better grades in some courses and worse ones in some other courses. Uh, but uh, what I always try to focus on is to get the most out of the subject I'm learning. If I feel that, okay, uh, at some later point in my life, I'll be able to use some part of this course, I, I I have enough knowledge about this course, then it's fine. It's okay to just pass the course. Yeah. And don't do that. You try to have a better grade, but uh, ultimately I, I felt it's, it's, it, it's very important to educate yourself and gain as much knowledge as possible from the course. Um, not just the course, but also the environment around you. There are a lot of uh, amazing researchers in FAU. So go to PhD students, try to talk to them. And um, I think that that's, that's uh, one way out for you to feel more motivated in the course. 
So actually, you, you mentioned a good point. Um, um, you have the possibility always to talk to your PhD students who are actually supervising the exercises of the course. And you have also to the opportunity to talk to the professor directly. There are office hours. And there are forums for asking questions. If you don't have the chance to go and meet them in person, you also have the chance to talk to other peers, to other students and ask your questions or ask, as I said, um, on the forums where it's actually supervised by the PhD students. So you can always collect your questions, uh, one, two, three, four, etc., and just post it there. And you will get an answer actually about all of that. And sometimes contribution from other students. Um, in my opinion, I would always recommend going to the lecture. However, some students don't do it, even the Germans. <laughs> Uh, sometimes uh, we were we were the only people. <laughs> to yes, <listen. laughs> we were like regular at all the lectures. Like I would see you all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the nurse, you know, standing in the first row and asking questions. Uh, but it's not a general rule. There are some courses where you really don't have to go there, but it's good to go there for finding contacts and uh, getting to know other students. Um, of course, at the moment, I don't know how it's going with online courses, because I believe the getting an education, a proper education and a certificate yeah. would facilitate everything in your life. It's the key for everything. Exactly. So if, if you just have to attend online lectures, I mean, in, in a scenario where there is no COVID, then you can sit at your home in your home country and still attend the lectures. But that doesn't make any sense. Since if, if you are coming here, then try to make the best use of it. Talk to people, like Sham said, um, and attend the lectures as far as possible. And maybe you, you'll also uh, be better prepared for exams if you attend the lectures because you'll yeah. know what is important, more important, because the professor might stress on it and you can prepare yeah. it better. Yeah. yeah, yes, that is actually true because um, this is one key as well for passing the exam. Um, yes. I'm not saying about understanding. You have to understand everything. That's why I find attending a lecture is good because um, it gives you an impression about the professor personality or how the exam will be. Um, the professor or the PhD students also, they will get familiar with your face. They will get to know you a little bit. You get to know them. Um, you start have a feeling about the exam. So if it's an oral exam, then um, it makes an imp a better impression that they have seen you before. Um, they are familiar with you. They know that you are good in the lecture, that you ask yeah. questions, uh, you participate and you show up. And uh, this is my strategy. I always stress on that. Sometimes you have to study the, the professor and the PhD students as much as you yeah. study the, 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 the lecture itself, the, the, the material. I think you know this even from your home country. It's not just in Germany. It's everywhere. Some professors ask the questions in a different way. Some professors look for more questions, uh, like speed in answering. Some professors look for understanding the concepts. Mm. Some professors are really by the by the letter. They want you to say everything exactly the same. And um, yeah, the questions, as we said before, might not come as they came before in the lecture. Mm. So you have to you have to have the full package and uh, always focus on what was before in the. Um, earlier years, what the seniors had before you. Um, yeah. This is why communication and contacts is good. And also, I think we, we should mention that there are both oral and written exams. I don't know how it will be now uh, with everything uh, going online, uh, but uh, you, you can, I think, uh, you can choose your own time and you can choose your own slots for the oral exams uh, and written exams are like you just have to go there and uh, take it when they're scheduled. I think right now with Corona, um, when it's uh, an exam, a written exam in place, um, you have to take a negative test and go there. Mm. Um, okay. But when it's oral, it's actually no one is forcing you to take it in any time. You, um, most of the time it's like um, you have a a pool of options uh, or you have a poll uh, where you choose one of the options that suits you best 
And if, if there is any problem, always communicate with your professor. I have something here or, or a problem there. And um, whenever there's also a problem with your, uh, with your health, for example, you can always also go to the doctor and get a report and justify uh, why you couldn't uh, go to an exam, for example. Um, so always stay in the light, follow the rules and be clear and be honest with yourself and with everyone around you. Uh, that will help yeah. you a lot. Yeah. Um, but but maybe, uh, maybe we give uh, also another um, advice. So what do you recommend for new students when starting in the first semester? What do you think they should focus on? I don't know how much of it has changed. Right uh, the courses have changed right now, but I would still recommend uh, them to take uh, PR and DMIP for sure. And uh, uh, try to uh, pass the conditional subjects. Yeah, so that's that important. important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's important, really. And maybe along with it, if you have, if you are brave enough, take two more courses and you can finish them. Like uh, the, the courses with uh, lesser credits, but uh, yeah. six, I, I think I, you can take yeah, yeah. six courses. I, um, I maybe I made a mistake when I started. So when I started, I took in the first semester also German, German course. Mm -hmm. um, German course required me uh, to go twice a week um, somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, there are some conditions for the German course that you don't pass to the next level unless you take a certain amount of credits. Mm -hmm. So you don't just stick to two courses. You have to add more on top of that, like uh, hearing more or, or writing or stuff like this that was a lot of stress for me i would recommend in the first semester like you said focus on the conditionals focus on two uh, core courses mm -hmm. you are like you said um, yeah. have enough energy take another one or two i finished actually my courses all the courses i finished in one and a mm -hmm. half year in the third semester i was almost done I maybe left uh, one or two courses with my uh, thesis. What took me some time was uh, to get to be convinced about the thesis topic and uh, uh, committing to that and finding one actually. That took yes. me some time. I think that's a very important point to mention to for everyone that uh, you will have to do some research project and also your thesis. So these uh, are the two uh, uh, courses which will uh, require you to um, independently look for the research field which you are interested in and uh, uh, maybe do some uh, it will be mostly a research work so you have to finish these two courses somehow uh, so i think uh, you you should spend some time in understanding what you would like to do but don't take it like don't stretch it too long like some people I've seen, they take six months to just decide what they want to do. So don't do that. Yeah. Once you have taken a topic and you're like, uh, OK with it to some extent, please continue and finish it off. Yeah. You should not spend too long on your master's as well. And thesis also, I think you should uh, you oh, should yeah. approach your uh, professor. I mean, the PR lab and then uh, Get it verified that this thesis will be taken into consideration for your evaluation because a lot of people do some uh, they start working on some topic and then realize that no this will not be accepted by the pr lab so mm -hmm. you have to make sure that your, your the work you're doing uh, really has some meaning in future I think this is a really important topic because um, many people don't set up their mind. They keep switching from one topic to another topic to another. And then, uh, by the way, you have a limited time for doing the master. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you have some condition or some special case, you can extend it by one semester or sometimes two. Um, sure. but, but you have to really have a, a, a good reason for that. So uh, our advice is always to... Uh, push yourself towards the end. Um, you can do it. You can really do it. Um, try to choose, of course, a topic that you like. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you. Mm. Um, 
and focus on what you are doing and finish. Uh, don't leave things open because it's your life and it's your time. Uh, yeah. The faster you finish, the faster you start a job, you know? Believe <laughs> uh, yeah. me, it's a different life when you finish your studies. True. Maybe we, we cover, actually, we will cover um, the thesis topic in detail yeah. and we will cover also the topic of working as a working mm -hmm. student. Working. I think we uh, should also talk about taking the rules seriously in Germany, yeah. not not mm -hmm. just uh, in the university, but also outside the university. If you happen to receive yeah. some letter or some post, then please read it. Even if you don't know German, try to learn German or go to a person who knows German and get it translated, know what it means. Otherwise, you might have to pay some huge fines in future. Yeah. You don't I know. never download anything in Germany, but yeah. we, we will talk about these out uh, rules yeah. later. <laughs> but, but yeah, pay attention to everything. Try to always ask, even if it sounds naive or uh, it, it might sometimes feel normal to us, but it's not in Germany. Um, you are coming to a new country you have to always um yeah make every all your senses on you know uh, be active all the time do learn learn german and work and uh, go here and there and meet friends and yes. um, have fun with your studies it's important to keep a balance um uh, between both um you are a human being so you also need some rest and uh, never yeah. be afraid and carry on yeah yeah, that, that's really important. Have, yeah, work towards your hobby along with your um, regular studies that I couldn't do it so well, but uh, now I'm <laughs> able to do it and I feel that maybe I could have done it at that time too. But just that you know, when you're young, you do, you're not that mature enough. Yeah. yeah, 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 you should follow your hobbies. That's true. I think I, I stopped everything when I was uh, when I was studying. I was so strict on myself. Yeah, uh, this is man, this is why we we are here both uh, trying to tell you different experiences so you can learn from that and yeah. avoid mistakes. Yeah, and I hope this was beneficial to all of you. And I think we are done, right? Yes. Thank you so uh, much. For thank you. And uh, don't. Uh, hesitate to contact us in the comments below. Uh, we will try to answer you as soon as possible. And um, always stay in touch with your student um, advisor and with your professors. And have a community of students and friends around you. And uh, and don't be afraid. Yes, absolutely. So thank you, everyone. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you in the next videos. Yes, thank I you. Hope this was Bye. Useful. Bye. Across the state and hoping it will cave and swallow me whole. Wonder why my mind keeps on spinning. This is how I live into me, what's all.